Hello and welcome to Sectors Up Close, I'm David Pollard. Today we're looking at whether low-end US retail is on the cusp of offering higher investor returns. And my guest is Satya Pradiman, Director of Research at Cirrus Research. Hard-pressed US consumers saddled with high inflation and high interest rates are also burdened with ever-increasing household debt, a total of $17.7 trillion in the first quarter, according to the latest figures from the Fed. That's up around $3.5 trillion on the start of the pandemic. But on the plus side, the US jobs market is strong and inflation and interest rates both look like they're coming down, a situation that should, says our guest, favour low-end retailers as the most price-sensitive consumers return. Well, with me now is Satya Pradaman of Cirrus Research. Welcome, Satya. Many thanks for joining us today. Those factors I just outlined there, why should they favour retailers at the low end rather than retailers higher up the food chain? Um, at the heart of this is this idea that the consumers are actually quite healthy in the sense that the jobs data is strong. Uh, in addition, the post-pandemic inflation surges are definitely on the mend globally. The counterpoint to this, however, is that mortgage rates are, or mortgage payments are high. Those are going to be very sticky the next few years. In addition to that, other very specific market-based uh, elements, such as insurance costs in the U.S., very high. So when you bring some of the fixed costs into play, the consumer is strapped. And as a result, what we've also got is a bottoming profit cycle. So you've got this sort of like comparisons for retailers that are actually going to be easier that allows those firms to basically relate stronger growth. So as you allude to there, consumer sentiment has been patchy, strong in places, but not so strong in others. So do you think the consumers will be fully on board with this theory that you're positing? Yeah, I mean, I think they're forced to. At the end of the day, um, if you look at the total costs that they're taking on in terms of groceries and day-to-day -day needs, they're high. And as much as economists like to talk about inflation rates, as these rates climb, those numbers are fixed. It, even if the rates are, are slowing, it's not as if they're reversing, right? So those pressures are here, and they're going to be here a while. So to be price uh, sensitive, I think that's the game. So according to your own notes, low-end retail has underperformed high-end by quite some margin and indeed underperformed the overall S&P 500. So what makes this a good time? Why should investors jump in right now? What makes the case here is that the valuations are more reasonable broadly. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the, the sort of comparisons, the rate of change on earnings growth are about to reverse course. So investors love companies that are growing, full stop. Last couple of years, very challenging window. And so we're finally, actually globally, we've put some work out that shows uh, just about every region we track, the top line, the sales growth for uh, these markets are finally bottoming. The, the slowest of which is China has finally in the last quarter started to settle in a bit as well. So let's talk some specifics. In terms of subsectors and names in retail, who do you like and why? Where should investors seek value? Yeah, our um, industry work and the sub-industry work that we're doing, they surface two groups that are quite attractive, specialty retailers and general merchandisers. On the specialty side, firms such as Dick's Sporting Goods, Tractor Supply, these firms are um, scoring very well in our work. Um, on the mer general merchandise side, you know, the classic names, Walmart, Costco. Also, if you go smaller, uh, Dollar General. So those are names that I think hold up very well. Those are industries that should start to stabilize and, and start to recover. Let's compare and contrast with high-end retail. That's obviously the big global luxury brands, but also US brands like Ralph Lauren. They've suffered very much for headwinds, notably from China, but also from a very strong US dollar. What do you, what do you see as the situation there? There's nothing in the work, when you look at the fundamentals of pricing currencies, there's nothing in the work that shows the relative economic growth of the US is going to slow. And as a result, it's very hard to see the dollar reverse course here. And so uh, I think the pressures on the luxury goods, I think they're going to be sustained for a while. So against that backdrop, would you bet that low-end retail stocks will be higher by year-end? 
the the jobs data is strong unless we get some sort of random event that that throws that off but this is a big shift to turn so some of the comparisons we're looking at they're fairly steady you've got a consumer that's going to chug along and uh that said they're just going to be more price sensitive okay satya we'll leave it there satya pradaman director of research at cirrus research many thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today and that is your roundup of the u.s low-end retail sector i'm david pollard this is Reuters.